Jackson Hinkle. <laughs> went, Troublemaker. Jackson Hinkle went on with Piers Morgan and he dismantled the Ukraine war narrative in Pierce Morgan's face. And all Pierce Morgan had to come back with <laughs> was ad hominem. You're bonkers. He, could, he didn't have a fact. Watch this. Uh, Vladimir Putin invaded illegally a democratic sovereign country, has wreaked total mayhem, he's killed innocent women, children, he's bombed maternity hospitals. Uh, he's been on a barbaric rampage. Why would you choose this moment to revere him? I I mean, you can tell Pierce is extra upset because he really wanted to like Jackson based solely on his hair. <laughs> we all do. We all do. We all do. But then he, then he becomes a Putin fanboy. So why this moment? This moment to revere him. I would choose this moment because most of what is said about Vladimir Putin in the mainstream press by talking heads like yourself is just factually not true. Just like everything that people like you said about COVID. Uh, the f bam oh. in your face in your face. <laughs> if your hair wasn't so good, I haven't cut you off. Oh. <laughs> he, I think, I think Pierce got lost in his hair, and he didn't even hear him say that. Pierce, he's the cognitive dissonance of that beautiful yes. hair and having to take. Just like you were wrong on COVID, you're just as wrong on Ukraine. You stupid establishment tool. Here we go. The fact of the matter is, this war that everyone talks about that. So uh, so-called started on February 24, 2022, actually began in 2014 after the U.S. led a violent coup on the Ukrainian government that was democratically elected. When people, specifically ethnic Russians in the Donbass, decided that they didn't want a U.S. installed puppet government filled with Nazis, they vocalized their opinions. And for that, they were met with violence and aggression by the Ukrainian government, who slaughtered them for eight years. 15,000 people died in this fighting while Putin tried to achieve peace through the Minsk Accords and the Minsk II Accords, all of which ended up being rejected by the Ukrainian government at the behest of Germany and the United States. The Ukrainian government continued to push forward despite the fact that Putin wanted peace, and they said that they wanted to join NATO. They said they wanted to have nukes right on Russia's border. And because of that, Putin stepped in and said, hey, look, we're going to stop the bloodshed. We're going to stop the NATO escalation. We're going to stop the risk of potentially this unfolding into a full-fledged nuclear war. And we're going to do what needs to be done. We're going to liberate the ethnic Russians in Ukraine. We're going to denatify Ukraine. Okay. And we're going to denazify <laughs> Ukraine. All right, I've given you a good oh. chance to answer that. Oh my God, Piers! I was surprised that Piers let him go on that long. His dick was so hard he couldn't think. <laughs> All the blood has gone from his yeah, brain to I'm, his dick. That's my theory. Piers' dick was so hard he would, wait. I'm back. Hang on. Get hey, get out of here. Come on, you crazy kid. Watch, watch what he says. I gotta say, a lot of that I thought was a crock of crap. Genuine. A lot of that was a crock of crap. He won't say what. He never says what. A lot of that was a crock of crap. Which he parts? Which parts? Or is he, he doesn't say. in his pants right now after that beautiful Jackson monologue? <laughs> Lee, the connection went down, so there's no conspiracy. We weren't trying to silence you. But I just find it odd. I mean, for argument's sake, when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, did what? you feel that he was a peace-loving guy that we should be distinct? But you notice he didn't say, remember when George Bush invaded Iraq? <laughs> he doesn't I, I, bring that up. It's he, crazy. He, it's amazing. It's crazy to bring up Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein from 1991. I would have thought. He's talking about 1991, Kurt. Yeah, like, you know, my amateur response, but at the first part of the question, I would bring up the U.S. and Iraq. Like, yes. somebody go, that's the past. He, he actually went further, further back. He went a decade further back. Which, by the way, Saddam, they were drinking Saddam's milkshake, if you ever saw There Will Be Blood. Slant drilling. Yes, that's right. Here we go. The supporting, or did you agree with... American conservatives then that what should actually happen is Desert Storm and General Schwarzkopf should be leading the American charge to repel him. So I don't know. So Pierce thinks this this is a good argument, like a gotcha. Oh. Hey, what you can't say you were against us taking care outside of the same in Kuwait. Yeah, ten years later it was a but that to before. So watch what he says. If you felt the latter, why would you feel differently about someone like Putin doing this in Ukraine? Well, I don't know if you know, Pierce, I'm only 23 years old, so I didn't have fully fledged opinions on that at the time. But what I think is very interesting is for all the Western officials that are so outraged over what 
Putin is doing in Ukraine, why were they not outraged over what NATO did to Yugoslavia or what NATO did to Libya or what the United States did in Iraq and Afghanistan or Syria? The United States drone operation program in Africa had a 95% civilian death rate. For everyone to be so up in arms over Putin liberating these ethnic Russians in Ukraine from Nazis, it is just, yeah, I, that, I have no- yeah, so Jackson, no Jackson, the trouble is, <laughs> some of the stuff you said in your initial response is historically defensible. You can argue from 2014, there's been this issue there. I get that. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to say. But when you say that Putin's only game here is to go and liberate the Ukrainians from Nazis, you just sound completely bonkers. Bon That's it. That's his whole argument is crock of crap. And bonk, you sound bonkers. That's his whole argument. Oh, and then he had that stupid thing about Saddam Hussein and Kuwait. That this, These are his arguments. Look what it says under there. Most censored man on YouTube accused of being former socialist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. It's not to say there aren't some far-right people with Nazi tendencies in Ukraine. There are, as there are in many countries. But the idea this is a Nazi-run country when the president is Jewish, never oh, mind man. anything else, oh. is laughably ridiculous. Well, just because he's Jewish doesn't mean he's not sicking his Azov Nazi thugs on ethnic Russians in the Donbass. You think we a Jewish president is going to be actively promoting Nazism? That's Correct. your position. The, the, what, the ones with swastika tattoos and Hitler tattoos okay. and Mario. <laughs> you know what, but what I'll say, here's, here's one question. One yeah. question. What I'll say is, if you're so outraged over the you know, the, the atrocities, allegedly, of Putin in Ukraine and all these Ukrainians that have been killed, and you tweet about it nonstop. Why did you not tweet once about the atrocities that were perpetrated by the Ukrainian government from 2014 to 2022 against those ethnic Russians in the Donbass? Well, yeah, of course. Well, I, my ah, family. he had no answer. So he throws it to this guy, the host of Trigger Pod. Yeah. What happened? He throws it to that guy. Let's. I don't know. I don't think. Actually, uh, largely. You can probably Russia. explore this in more detail. I mean, Will Jackson, I've got no desire to censor you, to stop you having your views. You're mm. entitled to them. I will challenge mm. them. Uh, we've run out of time tonight, but I think we should do this again another time. Let's get uh, dinner. You can have a platform here. <laughs> we can talk about these things because a lot of people. What are you doing this weekend? Let's get dinner. How would you react if I put my hand on your thigh <laughs> during dinner? Only 23, you say. Oh, my. <laughs> 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 and I don't blame him. I have dinner with you. I'd have dinner with you. <laughs> He's a little jerk, but there's a twinkle in his eye and in his hair. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Uh, seem to agree with you, which I find baffling, but that's the reality. So thank you for joining Piers Morgan on Census Night. Okay, so that was it. That was very well. Well done, Jackson. He nailed him. And I didn't get to hear the other guy's part. Um, but Jackson is fond of, so that other guy was on Piers Morgan's side. That's the guy from Triggered Pod. He was? Yeah. And uh, he things going on over there. And then Jackson did some research and found out um, that his dad used to work for Boris Yeltsin. Really? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Then how does he not uh, know better? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, White Hammer. So this is the new, so this whole idea that there aren't Nazis running things in Ukraine. <laughs> White Hammer. This is from the New York Times. White Hammer and the trident of Stefan Bandera. Another, the Azov, Patel, the Azov group, is openly neo-Nazi using the wolf's hook symbol. Wait, so is White Hammer? <laughs> I like that. Well, Azov, they're not all neo-Nazi. Like, White Hammer is just, like, really close to it. And they're called White Hammer. I, I refuse to believe. <laughs> The Putin propaganda <laughs> that a group called White Hammer could possibly be Nazis. <laughs> that is a Putin talking point that the, the New York Times printed. Aaron Maté says, so here, look at White Hammer group. He, he retweets this. It's commanders of Ukraine celebrated A's, celebrated A's. So he shows it. He shows in 2015, they were called neo-Nazis. And now, in 2022, they're called Celebrated. Mm. Ah. Wow. Well, technically, Aaron, that is what happened. Uh, <laughs> they are Nazis, and now America celebrates them. <laughs> so they were being actually true. Nailed it. Nailed it. There it is. There it is. Celebrated Azov Battalion have held an emotional reunion. There it is. 
Oh, that's beautiful. There, there it is. Emotional reunion with their families in Turkey, Ukrainian officials said. You know, the only way this scene could be even more beautiful and more perfect is if John Stewart would show up and hang a medal on one of those Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> if Sean Penn gave him an Oscar <laughs> here it is so you want to know that this is what they used to say so this is from June 7 2023 Nazi symbols on Ukraine's front lines <laughs> highlights thorny issues of history oh is it a thorny issue thorny. it's complicated Jimmy Jimmy it's complicated Troops' use of patches bearing Nazi emblems risks fueling Russian propaganda uh -huh. and spreading imagery that the West has spent half a century trying to eliminate. So th half a century trying to eliminate Nazi symbols? Has it been that long, Kurt? Yep. Imagine if we'd spent that time eliminating the actual Nazis instead of just their symbols. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So basically, the West is like a shitty landlord painting over black mold on the ceiling instead of getting the pipes fixed. <laughs> what, they literally say in the thing, they go, it's, see, them having the Nazi emblems will spread Russia's propaganda, which happens to be true that they have Nazi emblems. And we've been fighting so hard How, to suppress the truth that they have Nazi <laughs> emblems. Oh, no. Oh, now they're going to say they're Nazis just because they like to wear Nazi emblems. That's what they're saying. So now Putin's going to say they're Nazis. Why? Because they're wearing swastikas. And Ooh. that's going to lead into propaganda that they're Nazis. A Ukraine service member is wearing what appears to be a black sun on the chest of her uniform. It appears to be the black sun. Now, I can't confirm or deny it. You mean because it is that? Because it's a Nazi emblem? Amazing article from the New York Times about the rather uncomfortable fact that photos of Ukrainian soldiers in leading battalions so often include Nazi symbols and flags. For a decade, the Western press warned Ukraine's fighters were dominated by Nazi units. They did. Guys, you risk fueling propaganda. Stop it. Hey, why was the press even warning about Nazis in Ukraine for years at all? Didn't their controllers in the intel community see this problem coming? Yeah, I do wonder that, kind of. I mean... Didn't they know? They all knew we were going to we were going to use Ukraine as a proxy war with Russia, meaning the CIA. Uh -huh. And so why wouldn't they tell all the. So oh, we had Nazi fever because of the Charlottesville. Oh, and Trump said, good. This is what's amazing. Oh, it's thorny. The history of Nazis and this and yeah. Nazis. Trump, the good people on both sides, quote, quote, which before that he goes, no one's saying Nazis are good. We, of course, I condemn them. He's talking about the stupid yeah. statue fight. Right. That was, oh my God, a literal Hitler is in the White House. So then it was advantageous to mention all the, you know, because a lot yes. of all right people ended up going to Ukraine because <laughs> they get it. Isn't it funny how Western articles before 2022 were documenting Ukraine neo-Nazism and all of a sudden Western media is like there are no Nazis in Ukraine. And meanwhile, soldiers wearing totem cumps i don't know what that is and black sun start appearing in the media so here's all the oh the blood the head the skull totem cump his head is that what that's here here's all the articles talking about neo-nazis mm -hmm. that's the atlantic council that's uh, all the all the articles even bellingcat yes it's still okay to call ukraine c14 neo-nazis even what? bellingcat bellingcat which is completely cia funded well, even they were saying that because there was a rise of the far right everywhere. Remember, Jimmy, it's like how COVID spread and the far right was spreading to America. See, in all these places, like, well, for example, even Ukraine has a huge far right problem. They're communicating. That's why I knew about it, because they were com talking so much about how scary and right wing America is. You know, Proud Boys are out there. This is the BBC. Ukraine deploys uh, and underplays role of far right in conflict. This is underplayed. Yeah. Now they're all underplaying it. Now we have to because of this. Yes. Thing. Yes. Yes. So they're like, okay, off that propaganda. Now this is the, the the insult to your intelligence is so high that you're supposed to forget the thing they just said and just get the new thing in there, and then just play dumb when someone brings up the thing that just happened. Come see our live shows. We're going to be in Chicago, Rosemont, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, New York City, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Stamford, Toronto, Toledo, Detroit, St. Louis, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Mm -hmm.